In Jesus name we pray thank you Heavenly Father for putting in your eternal world that which will happen in our day and the solution of it thank you Lord you will lead us through this time and we shall look backwards and give testimonies we shall praise you in history God what for what you have done and achieved for your people our children children's children if the Lord delays in coming shall be emboldened by the present time the events of present time they shall praise your name because of your great salvation thank you father in jesus name we pray amen god's judgment against wicked people and their evil powers God's judgment against wicked people and their evil powers yes often wicked people are proud because of the power they have acquired some they have acquired the power of money to and use it to do wickedness such then is an evil power but mostly it is satanic power is satanic power that they, in, they acquire and so burst yes they burst because of the satanic power they have acquired now if somebody is busting because he has acquired power from Satan and you know that the power of Satan is limited and is subject to God what will you bother about he has the lower power which we shall see in our study that the power they are boasting about the satanic powers are under our feet now when an evil man is on the throne manifesting his wickedness the people under him suffer the Egyptians suffered because of Pharaoh yes God himself was happy in their suffering and judgment because they were together with Pharaoh in the oppression of his own people besides all Pharaoh was doing was to their pride to their glory they were one with Pharaoh Pharaoh was working for them they were celebrating this together rejoicing when Haman got authority from the king to destroy the Jews and gave out 
and uh, set the date of this evil act. We were told that the enemies of the Jews rejoiced everywhere. They were together with Haman in the plot. They were wicked. They were so happy waiting for the day to come to wipe out the Jews and get the spoil for themselves. So when the judgment came, it did not only come on Haman. Many of them died. Judgment for wicked people. So the Egyptians under Pharaoh were wicked. They were working together with Pharaoh. Boasting themselves over the children of Israel. And so God met them to suffer under Pharaoh. They suffered under Pharaoh. Similarly, the ruler of our nation, who are Muslims, are devising evil plan against Christianity and Christians. This is to the joy of the Muslims. They are in contribution to it. Else they should have raised up their voice and said, No, we have lived in peace. We will not allow that. These are human beings. Let's live in peace with them. They have not troubled us. Leave them to serve their God. But... They are boasting themselves. This place will become Islamic. This nation will turn Muslims. Africa shall be gotten. I'm boasting this thing in pride. Because of powers acquired. Because of abundance of sorceries. Because of divinations and enchantments. So, as the judgment is coming, it shall come on all of them. Not only on Pharaoh, but on the subjects who are priding together with Pharaoh. God will judge them for wickedness. So, we are going to see in the book of Exodus, chapter 7, yes, to chapter 10 series of plagues in fact it's chapter 11 series of plagues released by God because of the hardness of heart of Pharaoh which the subjects also suffered from so to tell you don't join the wicked man to propagate wickedness. Don't pride with any man that wants to do evil, even if it is for your benefit. Don't agree with it. Otherwise, when it turns round, you will go with him. Judgment will carry you with him. If you are a Muslim, stay aside and declare and pray as I'm not part of this. My hands are not there. And let God hear you. Let man hear you. Repent also. Repent of the spirit you have associated yourself with. Repent and turn to Jesus yourself. Because it's a fight against God. It's a fight against the creator. It is a fight against the savior. And it's not possible. Never. To fight your, to your creator the work the potter says and the word of God says who makes the pot he uses the clay to form the pot and the clay cannot fight him they have no how will it fight the potter he has mastery over it so the creatures cannot fight, fight the creator he has mastery over you 
over all things that he created, everything he made is lower than himself, including Satan, who is just walking by his permission, by the permission of the living God. He allows or disallows him. So, renounce Islam. Renounce that faith. Follow Jesus. And save yourself eternally. Save yourself from the judgment of God. Otherwise, when the judgment comes, he will not spare them. Now, I'm talking about the plagues of God upon the Egyptians. God made the Egyptians to suffer these plagues. So they may know that the vision of Pharaoh was re really not for their good, but evil. And it was for their destruction. Any person that raises up any vision, any project in this country or in Africa for Islamization is doing so for his heart. Is doing so for the heart of the people that are with him. The people that he is promising. Yes, this is the voice of God. And let man hear. Because the Lord himself shall take action against mortal man. In the book of Exodus chapter 7. I read verse 17 to 21. Exodus chapter 7 verse 17 to 21 thus saith the Lord in this thou shalt know that I am the Lord they were talking to Pharaoh he has said in verse 15 get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning Lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river's brink against he came he come, and the rod which was turned to a serpent shalt thou take in thine hand, and thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, he tattle, thou wouldest not hear. Now I am going to start actions, judgments that will make you know I am the Lord. I am going to put you and Egypt into torments to make you know I am the Lord. Of course you say you don't know the Lord. You will know me now. You belittle me. <laughs> That's why you think you can oppress my people. That's why you think you will not allow my will to be done. I will show you the supremacy of God. I will show you the greatness of God. I will show you the creator. The power of the creator. For my people's sake. So you will respect those people forever. You will honor those people forever. The Egyptians shall respect my people forever. Now, he said, Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. That's why Moses tell him, And the fish that is in this river shall die, and the river shall stink, and the Egyptians shall lose to drink of the water of the river. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of, the, of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, and they, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that, they were, that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died. 
and the river stank and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt and then in verse 24 and all the Egyptians digged round about the river for water to drink for they could not drink of the water of the river and seven days were fulfilled after that the Lord had smitten the river can you see essential thing water the Lord deprived the Egyptians from water the number one essential thing water more than light you could be in darkness but water is essential for your life for you to live to drink the water was turned to blood systematic judgment of God let Egyptians know and our God is dealing mercifully because he's dealing with his creatures will they learn lesson will they cry out will they take a march against Pharaoh will they realize the living God will they repent everybody was quiet for seven days they were suffering from water digging everywhere because they could not fetch water from the river if any water stored anywhere was blood fish died in streams in in ponds and in the river so that every water was smelling this was what God did and it was clear because it was suddenly done in one day to see whether these people will come back to their senses you don't know what the Lord is doing among these people who are saying they are planning the Lord is doing some systematic thing among them is he really interested for the death of the wicked no I am interested rather that the wicked turn away from his sins turn away from his wickedness and leave that is the interest of God so he did this unto them he didn't recover them he will move forward yes the Bible tells us how Pharaoh ignored what the Lord had done he ignored it so the Lord would move to the next thing the, the plague of frogs in chapter 8 of Exodus verse 1 to verse 6 and the Lord spake unto Moses go unto Pharaoh and stay and, and say unto him thus saith the Lord let my people go that they may serve me and if thou refuse to let them go behold I will smite all the borders with frogs and the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly who shall go up and come into thine house and into thy bedchamber and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants and upon thy people and into thine ovens and into thy kneading troughs and the fro frogs shall come up both on thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants and the Lord spake unto Moses say unto Aaron stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams over the rivers and over the ponds and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt and Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt so we can see what happened frogs multiplied in Egypt it was not an easy thing you are cooking something on the on the fire frog will jump into it you are sitting down frog one frog will be on your head two on your shoulders and the rest of them are around your tie where you are sitting are you how is that type of life how do you feel you feel terrible our God he knows how to handle human beings he knows but do you know that the Egyptians were tough-hearted people not only Pharaoh Pharaoh was just one of them tough-hearted could they not have cried out could they not have run to Pharaoh 
Who did not have dethroned Pharaoh and say, You want to destroy us? Remove, get away, and let these people go. They never did it. They were still quiet with the frog, the judgment of the frog everywhere. Everywhere. And when Pharaoh cried, Moses, Exodus, read verse 14. But let's start from verse 12. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh. And Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And the frogs died out of the houses of the villages. Out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. And they gathered them together upon heaps. And the land stung. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite he hardened his heart and he, and hearkened not unto god unto them as the lord had said and the lord said unto moses say unto aaron stretch out thy road and smite the dust of the land that it may become lies throughout all the land of egypt and they did so for aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth and it became lies in man and in beasts all the dust of the land became lies throughout all the land of egypt and the magicians did sorry and all became lies throughout all the land of egypt lies on the body lies on your hair lies on your cloth your cloth is itching your body is itching your head is itching lies in the everywhere part of your body lies moving up and down giving you restlessness that's what god did systematic judgment i'm telling you we we're, were blaming pharaoh only the egyptians were tough-hearted these proud people they were proud people actually because to them uh how do we give up how do we surrender Egy common israel will come and look down upon us and we were we were, we were crying don't worry we're going the lord has not finished we're going until 10 plagues will come on them and the lord is the one giving them and moderating them i've given you the former ring moderately but i will cause to come upon you the former ring and the later ring in the, the first month i will gather this thing upon you one day and you will you will just bow to the god of heaven so let's follow god so what am i saying something is going on among the enemy people even among the muslims some work of god divine is already at work among them you may not hear you may not know but some of you may know concerning this evil plan that is before them some evils are also going on it's only they are toughening themselves they are toughening themselves according to their nature according to the spirit the spirit of the religion but don't mind we are going somewhere the lord knows how to bust up the place in jesus name yes they suffer from these lies then flies flies even the common cows that pass by us the flies they dispatch for us are giving us trouble very notorious type of fly is looking for your eye to enter inside is looking for your food to land upon you have been struggling but the egyptian one was terrible egyptian one was not we could kill this one with fleets insecticides but the egyptians on no all the insecticide of the family of the nation will finish the flies will still be there because it came from judgment in chapter 8 verse 20 to 24 and the lord said unto moses rise up early in the morning and stand before pharaoh lo he cometh forth to the water and say unto him thus saith the lord 
Let my people go that they may serve me. Else, if thou wilt not let them let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. And I will savor in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end, thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And the Lord did so. And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarms, the swarm of flies. Amen. So, this is it. The Lord sent swarms of flies. Flies everywhere. Different kinds of flies. If there were photographs at that time, they would have slapped us the, the various species. You would have wondered. The, it would even show for the wonderful creation of God. Because flies of their various color, kinds, terrible ones, all kinds, moving around Egypt, upon the bodies of people, entering the nose, entering the eyes, entering the ears, struggling everywhere. It's a hard thing to rebel against God. It's a hard thing to do evil. To continue to do evil. When God himself rises in judgment. It's a hard thing. How do you contend with him? He knows how to keep you restless. Now, tell me. Who is among them? Or who was among them that slept? Did the little children sleep? Did the adults sleep? When flies surround you, do you sleep? No rest. No sleep. It was a great thing, great judgment that came upon this. In fact, Pharaoh responded. Verse 25. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not me to do so. It is not made so to do for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the egyptians to the lord our god lord shall we sacrifice the abomination of the egyptians before their eyes and will they not stone us we will go three days journey into the wilderness into the wilderness and sacrifice to the lord our god as he shall command us and pharaoh said I will let you go, that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far away. Entreat for me. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord, that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Tomorrow, but let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully anymore in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Can you see? Now these people think they can deceive the Lord. Can't deceive the Lord. The Lord knew how he would behave. But the Lord showed mercy. In judgment, remember mercy. But then, how long? Mercy has an end. Mercy has an end. For you to repent, you're only looking for mercy. Repent. Stop it. Oh, show me mercy. Show you mercy. Mercy should go with repentance. Mercy has an end. He showed you one mercy, two mercy, three, four, five. He will close the door to mercy. And judgment will overtake you. So that is what happened unto Pharaoh. Now, 
we continue. Judgment continued. The plagues, the plague of hells. In chapter 9, verse 13, and verse 8 rather, no, we get this, the plague of, uh, uh, on their livestock. In chapter 9, verse 1 to verse 7. Verse 1 to verse 7. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord, God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For if thou refuse to let them go, and will hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep, there shall be a very grievous moraine. And the Lord shall sever between the people of Israel and the people of Egypt. And there shall nothing die of all that is the children children's of Israel. And the Lord appointed a set time saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that that thing on the morrow and all the cattle of Egypt died but of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one and Pharaoh sent and behold there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened and he did not let the people go God judged the animals the earth itself is traveling because of the sinfulness of man. The creature also has suffering because of the sinfulness of man. Yes, your sin causes the members of your family to suffer. Your, your sin is spreading its own judgment on other innocent ones, of course, who are also sinners with you. Not the righteous one, because we're told in the righteous side, Judgment never came there. If you're in a family of wickedness, make sure you are on the righteous side. So that the, ju the, the judgment of God that has come upon anyone spreading to the family will not come upon your life. Because you are on the side of righteousness. When the cows, sheep, donkeys, and various animals died because of the judgment of God, Pharaoh sent to the land of Goshen to go and verify is this natural dead or the way these people are saying is true. They went and verified not one died to show clearly that God is in this matter. The problem is how some people harden their hearts with clear, clear manifestation of God. Clear that God is with this man. God is with these people. God is among these people. They, don't, they still re refuse, harden their hearts, and still are bent to do evil against the man. Still are bent to do evil against the woman. You can see the mystery. Pharaoh sent to investigate, and the report came that not not one of the of the animal of the Israelites died. All the deaths were on our side. Yet he hardened his heart. He despised the word of God to that extent. You can see how much man can go. You can see. Sometimes you will be thinking, God, forgive the man. Do you know how wicked he is? Do you know the extent of wickedness the man is? How deep in evil and how determined he is to do evil. Now, if man is like this, can be like this, how much more Satan? Satan. How was Satan? If man could show stubbornness to this degree, how much more Satan? Com 
completely there is no moral hope in Satan. There is no good thing in Satan. He is a complete bundle of evil. A complete bundle of rebellion. A complete bundle of wickedness. Therefore, how then do you think Satan can be of help to your life? How can you go to this complete wickedness and think that he will protect you? He will do you good. He will bless you. It is for your dead. It is for your harm. All those charms you are collecting, they are satanic. How do you ever think that if man could be to this extent in wickedness, in evil, to this extent, in hardness of heart against God and his righteousness and his ways how do you think you will go to Satan to collect charm and that the charm will help you you will go to this and collect the, you go to the abalis and get some demons and you are saying the demons are helping you you are deceived to a great extent you are endangering your life. Your days are numbered. Whatever good you think that charm is doing to you is just preparing you for the day of slaughter. It's preparing you for the day of, of, of destruction. It shall abandon you on the way and you will collapse because you have entered into the father of wickedness. The father of iniquity the father of evil the father of hatred and you are looking for solace you are looking for help from him he has no help but what he is he will give unto you wickedness that's what the bible says wickedness proceeded from the wicked yes you want wickedness go to a wicked man then you will know you will see wickedness go to satan then you are going to see wickedness. So see how this man hardened his heart against, against the, the judgment, even upon animals. Then the plague moves forward. Chapter, eight, chapter 9, verse 8 and 10. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. And it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt. And shall be a boil breaking forth with blends upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven and it became a boil breaking forth with blends upon man and upon beasts can you see boils cancerous type of boils boils that rested upon everybody including Pharaoh everybody in Egypt and rested upon the animals they were scratching themselves it will grow and break grow another one grow and break these people suffered come this is suffering on earth not hellfire where suffering because of sin and wickedness shall get perfected this is suffering on earth a boil growing with pain you scratch you scratch then it will break after some days and then another one is growing from the same place and other growing around the body the body everybody your ch father mother children boils it's not easy to disobey god to join the multitude to do evil it is not easy to associate with evil people even all even in christianity all these evil prophets wicked prophets have sacrificed human beings 
wicked leaders than sacrificed human beings do more do every kind of wickedness you, is to belong to them to serve them to walk with them your judgment is terrible your judgment is great because the wicked shall not go unpunished and you who are supporting wickedness strengthening the wicked man fetching water for him to drink giving him water to take bath you will not escape torment torture you say ah, but he's giving me money giving you money of iniquity money of wickedness you will perish with that money i'm telling you the judgment of god is great against iniquity Stop, run away from the evil man for where must you partake of his iniquity why must you so see now the people of most of pharaoh they con they conspired together against the people of god see now suffering pitiful suffering it comes from where from the living god the creator both judgment and mercy belongs to him so why don't you change why don't you repent is it easy for where they are gathered where Boko Haram people are gathered, where enemies are gathered in the bush, it is not easy. Judgments of all kinds. They are even afraid of whatever is going to happen to them now. It's not easy. It's only the toughness of man. Tough-hearted. Because man and Satan in contention against God. The devil is telling them, hold to your ground. Hold to your ground. Devil that deceived them. I will, I will save you. I will deliver you. I will devil. Has he saved himself in, in heaven? Has he delivered himself from heaven? And in he from hell? How can he deliver another man? That's deception. It's not an easy thing. Plagues continue. Yes. Plagues continue. In chapter 9 verse 13 to 28. The Bible tells us. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth see the two that three categories of people that judgment is overtaking the leader himself the ruler himself then the ministers and governors that are serving under this ruler judgment then the people common people that belong to this ruler that is doing this thing to their favor then that they may know that i am the lord all this noise you're hearing some of these muslim governors making just watch them and god be peaceful hezekiah said don't answer them a word the lord shall answer them i say the lord shall answer them all contemptuous words against Christianity, all proudful words and utterances against Christianity, be peaceful. There is a God that will answer them. He will answer them. Did he not answer Sennacherib? He answered Sennacherib. Did he not answer Pharaoh here himself? He answered Pharaoh. He will answer every one of them. Stubbornness shall bow. The Lord shall handle them. Be peaceful. Be peaceful. You just look to God and pray. And repent of your life. And repent of your sins. That is what the Lord wants you to know. Then, it, you see, judgment came upon them. For now, I will stretch out my heart. That I may, I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence and thou shalt be cut off from the earth pharaoh you will not live again at the end when i finish my works on you you will be a dead man i will cut you off he was a young man he's not really very old he has not lived up the fullness of his age 
He's still hoping. He was thinking to rule more and more, but the Lord will cut him off. From the earth, that is what he said. From the whole earth, the earth shall not have a place for him because the creator of the earth is against him. Yes. And yet, exaltest thou thyself against my people that thou wilt not let them go. Pharaoh, you are still proud over my people. You are exalting yourself, speaking as if you have power. Come, listen to me. Behold, tomorrow, about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hell, such as had not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Now, the mercy of God is still there in some portion for you and for your people in Egypt. Send therefore now and gather thy cattle and all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast who shall be found in the field and shall, be uh, and shall not be brought home, the hell shall come down upon them and they shall die. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh met his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine heart toward heaven, that there may be hell in all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt and Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven and the, land sent, uh, and the Lord sent thunder and hell and the fire ran along upon the ground and the Lord rained hell upon the land of Egypt so there was hell and fire mingled with the hell very grievous such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation and the hell smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hell smote every herb of the field, and break every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel, I mean, where the children of Israel were, was there no hell. Now, Pharaoh. In your farm, in your farmlands, all the farmlands of Egypt, I'm going to send judgment, stones and fire. I will be pouring them down, hell, stones and fire. Anyone that is in the farm, tell him to come home, to bring his kettle home. I'm giving you a warning. And it should be done immediately. Otherwise, consider dead all cattle, all animals that are in your farmlands. Any, all the people that are shepherding those animals in the farmlands. All people in farmlands anywhere. Tell them to come back home. There were people that feared the Lord among the Egyptians. And they sent to their people because they knew that the God of Israel, he is the God. They knew. Well, they, they at least they have, learned, they have gotten more experience. So, they sent to gather all the people from the farmlands. But, the pe other people despise God. I'm telling you to this extent. Even when it is for their good, they, want, they were still contemptuous. Some people are already sold to Satan. They are already sold. There's nothing. No fear of God. They disdain God. If you say, if you, say you can just let him destroy it. Let, me, let, him, let me see, let me see. I don't believe it. You know, there are people, the Lord will give a word. They say they don't believe. I don't believe. I don't believe. The Lord gives message. They say they don't believe. The Lord gives revelation. They say they don't believe. 
they are there human beings offspring of the devil children of satan children of the wicked one they are meant for judgment they are meant for god to demonstrate his truth over their lives they shall live to know that god the, is the god of truth and that his world is settled in heaven so the lord released the judgment mighty fire and storms fell upon the farmlands round about egypt every animal that was not brought home died in the farmland all people shepherds and people who build their houses in farmland or were going to farm died all of them it was a grievous thing to show that don't despise god's word and god is doing all this thing for his people for his people for his people how many were the egyptians um, were the children of israel in egypt that god will go all out to do this that you think that for the whole country nigeria the lord will sit still and allow muslims to say they're going to fight all christians for all the people that represent him in africa the lord will sit still and say let the muslim take over it shall not happen yeah. i say it shall not happen yeah. judgment will fall the serious and systematic judgment is already going on you will come and hear it it will soon explode and you will hear yeah. ah, my people that's we're serving the same god i am god and i change not therefore my people are not consumed my people are not consumed i am god i change not so let not everybody not let not people be afraid in the east in the west in the south in the north not even those among the muslims because the power of god the authority of god will shake the earth will shake the inhabitants of the people amen yes then pharaoh shall know the lord then the people shall know the lord now the lord will touch food systematic is food now the lord will touch to render scarcity of food he has touched water he caused water to be scarce now he will cause food to be scarce in the book of exodus chapter 10 verse 1 to 7 and the lord said unto moses go in unto pharaoh for i have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants that i might show this my signs before him and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's son what things i have wrought in egypt and my signs which i have done among them that ye may know how that i am the lord and moses and aaron came in unto pharaoh and said unto him thus seeth the lord god of the hebrews how long will thou refuse to humble thyself before me let my people go that they may serve me else if thou refuse to let them the, let my people go behold tomorrow will i bring the locusts into thy coast and they shall cover the face of the earth that one cannot be able to see the earth and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped which remained unto you from the hell and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field and they shall fill thy houses and the houses of thy servants and the houses of all egyptians which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth until unto this day and he turned himself and went out from pharaoh and pharaoh's servants said unto him how long shall this man be a snare unto us let the men go that they may serve the lord their god knowest thou not yet that egypt is destroyed and moses and aaron were brought again unto pharaoh 
And he said unto them, Go, serve the Lord your God. But who are they that shall go? And Moses said, We will all we will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our hearts will we go, for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. And he said unto them, Let the Lord be so with you, as I will let you go, and your little ones look to it, for evil is before you. Not so. Go now, ye that are mean, and serve the Lord, for that ye did desire, and they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Hey, praise the Lord. Can you see? The, you know, this hardness of heart is according to grade, grade. The servants have become tired. They couldn't continue with Moses. Of course, it's not really. Some have understood that this course, this our leader wants to take, is a dangerous course. And they're even contending with him. Yes, we want this nation to be Islamic, but the way we look at it, it will not work. The power of Jesus will not allow this happen. Is, are you not seeing judgment already among our people? Are you not seeing deaths come flying everywhere among our people? Are you not seeing but Pharaoh to show that the demon that is with Pharaoh is greater? He hardened himself. First, Pharaoh really had uh, sarcasm. Okay, call Moses to come back. Call Moses to come back, and they came. He said, "Okay, uh, you, who are the people you say will go and serve God?" Moses said, "Everybody, including all our animals." He said, "Then evil will happen to you. How will everybody go?" He said, "No, that's how God commanded." He said, ah, ah, "You want to show me? Okay, get out from this place." Ah, the, uh, the Lord is interested in that statement. He's interested in the hardness of your heart. The Lord is even saying, He knew who you were. You were. He knew that you are a stubborn person. He knew you would give yourself to Satan. He knew that. So when they were looking, when you were, uh, they were looking for Pharaoh to rule Egypt, I recommended you. Because I knew how you have contacted Satan and full of power. Then I will show the power of God versus the power of Satan. I know you. Be there. I will then the world shall know. As I begin to show the power, you know, when rat when a cat gets rat, he doesn't kill it immediately. They have to play. He will carry the rat, throw it away. And be running around, running around. I, I will be, just lie down there and allow rat to be running. As he sees, he runs and holds him the other side. Try, take it, come on, throw it away. And then be watching him. Have you watched that before? That's what God was doing with Pharaoh. The rat, the cat knows I will eat up this one, but let me mock it. Let me tell you that you are free, you can run. <laughs> and the rat will be, be struggling to run. And he will go quickly go ahead of it and lie down there and pick it and throw it again. You can run. That's what God was doing with Pharaoh. You have power. Yes, do it. So that I will now have enough time to show the world. Because I'm introducing myself to the world. In this my drama through you. To show the power of God. To show the greatness of God the eternal excellencies of God the dominion of God yes the supremacy of God the power of God I raise you up for this purpose so that is what happened and the Lord verse 12 and the Lord said unto Moses stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land even all that the hell had left and moses stretched forth his rod over the land of egypt and the lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night and when it was morning the east wind brought locusts and the locusts went up all over the land of egypt 
and rested in all the coasts of Egypt very grievous where they before them were before them there were so such there were no such locusts as they neither after them shall be such for they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened and they did not and, and they did eat every half of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hell had left and there remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field throughout all the land of Egypt then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste and he said I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you uh, Pharaoh you sinned wonderful God will handle those things that stubborn heart that is still speaking that is still venting rods I will teach you sins I will deal with you wait he shall come and confess I say he shall come and confess that is God he called for Moses in haste now therefore forgive I pray thee my sin only this once so you knew you were sinning so you really knew these are the people of God and you planned this wickedness against them so you knew God is beside it so you knew about the living God so you knew that you were stubborn so you knew that you were an evil man and you set forth an evil scheme so they knew they knew who told you they didn't know the Bible says that which shall be known of God has been made known unto man. Even his eternal power and Godhead. So that there is no excuse. Every man should know God. He should understand God. No, no excuse. But that which is to be known of um, that which is known of God is contempted by them. Distend. That is it waiting for judgment who told you that they don't know who told you that they didn't know the supremacy of christianity who told you that they didn't know the supremacy of jesus go to their book and you will see jesus there they are aware of it stubbornness wickedness evil demon and the lord will handle it i said jesus will handle it yes he now said i have said forgive me I pray thee, my sin, only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this dead only. Because it is dead, people will die. All food is gone. If this locust remain for another period, we're dead. We're dead. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord, and the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the, the locusts. And cast them into the Red Sea. And there remained not one locust in all the coasts of Egypt. This is another miracle. Because the locust that you will not see the ground. You will not see anything but just locust. Everywhere. Houses covered. Everywhere. Just locust. Vanished until not one could be seen. In an instant. This is miracle. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. Yes, he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Then there is, when we say the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, I told you Pharaoh, that is the nature of Pharaoh. It's only uh, the Lord allowed it. That which the Lord allowed, which he could have disallowed, is as God did it if war takes place god sent it if there's any religious war is then god sent it but he said no Which, how did he send it by allowing it but he said no i'm not going to allow it that's why there shall be no war you hear that's why there shall be nothing because he said, no i will not allow it so how he would do we don't know but we are seeing from the world there will be systematic judgment systematic for that stubbornness for that meeting together to wipe out the people for that thing they have done the law will not spare 
so that they should come to know tomorrow they should not do like that to Jesus again and to his people so let's go what's the next thing now darkness hey systematic judgment now in chapter 10 verse 21 to 23 the Bible says and the Lord said unto Moses stretch out thine heart towards heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt even darkness which may be felt and Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days they saw not one another neither rose any from his place for three days but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings darkness just as we are the whole place became so dark even light was dark how to turn to anywhere to turn to any none so where you sit you just sit down there if you want to poo poo you poo poo where you are if you want to urinate you urinate where you are i say egypt have never known that type of thing the darkness was so dark that it's, if you put your hand like this you'll be touching something <laughs> and what you're touching is darkness you'll be touching something it's only you cannot see because it is still darkness terrible the earth suffered from judgment and the, the more is coming then come what is waiting in the darkness of hellfire what is waiting for sinners in hell only god knows eyes have never seen those who have opportunity to go by revelation to hell to hell come to tell us a little thing 10 over 100 i mean 10 over 100 10% of the nature of hell they cannot describe the full they don't have the language the vocabulary is not on earth they're struggling with the language of the earth to tell you how earth looks hell looks like don't go there so that is what happened they were it was so heavy now what really made pharaoh to bust what is really making some of these people to bust it is the power of enchantment the power of magicians what their magic powers what their enchantment can can do they can enchant demons and they are already used to enchanting demons incantations divinations and bring out demons to work for them so they believe that these demons they have they have gathered them they have gotten enough enchanters which power which doctors which professors so as a result it will miracle will happen the devil has promised them he's around himself <laughs> they don't know that the man that is promising them that he will help them he will employ them is somebody they have already sacked from office is somebody that has been dismissed a dismissed director is promising you that he will give you a job in ministry of agri how will he do it I'm asking you, and you are believing. Hey, it's a director that told me you don't know he's a dismissed person. How will he do it? He was dismissed. Satan is a dismissed director. The demons, the thing they have gathered, are dismissed from were dismissed from heaven. The source of power. They fell from there. What can they give them on earth? You will see more. Look at it in Exodus. Chapter seven verse 8 to verse 13 just the deceitfulness of those people exodus chapter 7 verse 8 to 16 i mean to 13 and the lord spake unto moses 
unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. Everybody said the last phrase together happily. But... But, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. We have with us is the superior power. With them is the power of witchcraft, the power of enchantment, the power of divination. But with us is the Lord our God who has the supreme power have this one in your heart in chapter 8 verse 6 and 7 chapter 8 and Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt and the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt then Pharaoh, you, you can see then you can see what these are the, these are the things strengthening Pharaoh what do you think you can do? Who is this your God? My own people. My own. I have enchanters, magicians. I have malam, malams, imams. I have these that can bring out that same power. That's your boasting. Is that so? That's why you're putting your confidence. That's why you're thinking that you will wipe away the people of God. You think that these people have done enchantment against the people of God. Is that what you're thinking? Listen, Pharaoh, the book of Numbers, chapter 23. Let them hear it. That they, they don't understand who are these Christians. They don't understand who are these demons either. The Bible tells us. Yes. Let them know about Christians. Let them know about these people the Lord has raised up. In Numbers chapter 23, I read verse 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel. What had God wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. No enchantment. All this enchantment of Islam shall not affect the Christians. In the name of Jesus, all this divination. They're, they're boasting on it. They don't know these are spoiled powers. These are retrenched powers. These are dismissed powers. They are obsolete powers. We're dealing with current powers that come from heaven. Current power. Jesus said, all power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go ye into all the world. We are going into the world. We are in the world with supreme power. With victorious power. Nobody can resist it. So forget about enchantment. They are thinking it is enchantment. Witchcraft. They can handle Christianity. Forget that. It shall be destroyed. It's like the spider is thinking that he will catch you with his spider web. Which type of spider web that can catch human being? Have you come across it? spider web so thick that you want to go it does not allow you you carry a stick and handle it and say get out of this place the spider web didn't get out which one which country where did it happen in dream not in reality so all those powers are spider webs you will pass through them and move your own way 
I say you will pass through them and move their own way. In Jesus' name. Therefore, there should be no fear of divination. Yes. Look at it in chapter chap, in, uh, in uh, chapter 8 verse 16 to 19 of, Pro, of Exodus. Exodus chapter 8 verse 16 to 19. The Bible says, and the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lies throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lies in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lies throughout all the land of Egypt. Verse 18. And the magicians did so with the enchantments to bring forth lies. Everybody lays it on. But they could not. They could not. So there were lies upon man and upon beast. Verse 19. Then the magicians said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. Amen. We will leave those witches behind. You hear? They are far behind. We're dealing with God, not witchcraft, not magicians. All the power. I think one of these malams was giving his story <laughs> that they were doing enchantment somewhere. A group of them met, oh, doing the enchantment, enchanting demons. It was even a drunkard that was passing by on the road. Side. There is mighty power, there is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. Some thunder fell where you were. Everybody scattered. Drunkard. A Christian drunkard, not a man in his senses like you. I said, not a man in his senses. How much more you who will stand up like David? I say, I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom ye have defied. This day the Lord shall cut off your head and give the carcasses of the Philistines to the base of the air. So shall all the world know that there's a God in Israel. Hallelujah. There is power in your tongue. There is weapon of warfare in your tongue. Mighty weapon. The word is near thee. Even in, your, even in your mouth. And in your tongue. I'm telling you. We are talking about magicians. You are talking about diviners. It means nothing. All power is given unto you. All power. Behold, I give unto you power. As we are praying. You don't know what is happening over there. I say you don't know what is happening over there. Hallelujah. That's what God would want you to know. The magicians suffered much judgment themselves. Yes. Judgment. Look at it in chapter 9 verse 11. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. For the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. Can you see? Judgment is overtaking them. All those mighty in enchantment brought from other countries, brought from the north, from the south, from the east. All of them that have come for war to think that they will enchant, judgment shall overtake them. Judgment shall overtake them. In Jesus' name. The righteous have more power. Let me give you a glimpse of the power of the righteous. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 27. And Daniel chapter 5, verse 11. Daniel chapter 2, verse 27. The Bible tells us, Daniel... Yeah. To show the power. The power that is in the magic um, is in the children of God the power that is in the children of God is great power chapter 5 verse 11 of Daniel chapter 5 
verse 11 there is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods and in the days of thy father light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him whom nebuchadnezzar thy father the king i say thy father made master of the magicians astrologers chaldeans and soothsayers for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding interpretation interpreting of dreams and showing of heart sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in this same daniel whom the king named belteshazzar now let daniel be called and he will show thee the interpretation daniel belteshazzar the spirit that is in him is greater superior yes superior to all other spirits yes in chapter one chapter one i read verse eight uh, verse from verse 17 as for these four children god gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom and daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before nebuchadnezzar and the king communed with them and among them all was found none like daniel hananiah michelle and azaria therefore stood they before the king and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm how many times better stronger are you than uh, religious chanter or religious what, what do you call them how many times greater are you one one person ten times so as for power then where does power belong they are all trusting in these other people lower spirits you have the spirit of the heavenly god you have the spirit of the heavenly lord resting upon you so i run up now yes judgment is coming upon this religion judgment is coming judgment is coming in the book of isaiah chapter 47 from verse 1 isaiah 47 from verse 1 the Bible tells us there, this boasting will come to an end. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and desolate. Give a clap of friend to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, do it. We have been afraid. Amen. We have been afraid of Islamic religion for too long. We are dealing with them with fear, with care, delicate people. Hey, they will rise up. The Lord said he's removing that from them. The Lord says he's removing that from their life. They shall no more be feared. There is no throne for them. The throne that always it must be a Muslim that will sit there. The Lord said, I'm taking it away. I'm taking it away. the millstones and grind mill uncover the logs make beer the lake uncover the tie and pass over the rivers slavery as when they carry slaves they carry some of them in naked i'm crossing them over to another land slavery is coming i say slavery is coming yes thy nakedness shall be uncovered yeah thy shame shall be seen i will take vengeance and i will not meet thee as a man i will take vengeance for what you have done to my people for this evil you have done against my people i the almighty shall take vengeance that as from our redeemer the lord of hosts is his name the holy one of israel sit down silent and get thee into darkness O daughter of Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the lady of kingdoms. 
hey you think that hey look at me anywhere every country is mine i can go to any country i can't jump any country that shall no more be mentioned over you Amen. it shall no more be mentioned over you Amen. yes that's what the lord is saying he said i was wrought with my people i have polluted my inheritance and given them into thine hand i was angry because the christians were backslidden the christians were evil they were committing sin they were not respecting me therefore i met you to 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 deal with them for me thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient has thou very heavily let them lay thy yoke eh? and thou says i shall be lady forever so that thou didst not lay these things to the heart neither didst remember the later end of it it's just because my people could not trust me anymore that's why i allowed you people to come out were you making noise in this country before because christianity backslides the churches backslid ministers turn to devils that's why i gave you ascendancy to oppress them but you you went further you went too far you went too far in wickedness you never thought how the end should be that i would be jealous of my people you never thought that they are my people my name is upon them and you went far and you're thinking you will be in that seat forever and thou sayest yes and thou says i shall be a lady forever so that thou didst not lay these things to that to thy heart neither this remember the later end of it therefore hear me now hear now this thou that art given to pleasures all the money come, came, comes to you all the riches great houses businesses everything comes to you thou that dwellest carelessly that say in thine heart i am and none beside me i shall not sit as a widow neither shall i know the loss of children nobody can conquer us oh hear this but these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day the loss of children and widowhood they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thy enchantments now your people shall die in a merciless way in, in it's in a terrible way you will not know how you don't you you think that you're secure it shall collapse in one day i shall cause a collapse over your life over your people in one day that's god talking that's god talking why should they be exalted over christians what's the reason from where who gave them the power who gave them the power our god is alive we are serving the living god everybody tell me the name of our savior the name of the lord the name of the lord the name of the lord that is the living god that is the eternal god that is the god the, the, the lord is a man of war he will rise up for his people he's the one answering now he said don't answer i will handle, I will handle them Amen. he's the one speaking authority is talking creator is talking who will not shake his voice the, which man can stand his voice who can stand his presence huh for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness and say you have power of witchcraft you have consulted with demons thou hast said in none see at me thy wisdom and thy knowledge it hath perverted thee and thou hast said in thine heart i am and none else beside me hey you think that you oh i i know how to bring secret plan i would do a secret plan nobody will know until i just capture them is that what you said secret plan can anything be done in this earth and the lord does not know what secret plan if you go up to the sky the lord is there if you go up to the sea the lord is there if you go under the earth the lord is there where will you hide from the lord he has seen your works he has seen your plan he has seen your evil he has seen the association of the people you have gathered before him to fight his own people he has seen them 
Joe, he will handle it. It is God and you. We, we, his people, shall be watching. We are going only after the spoil. We shall watch and see what the Lord has done. According to this time, it shall be said, what has the Lord wrought? But as for us, we are not moved. We are fixed like the mountains. Like the mountains that surround Jerusalem. They are still there. So are we until the Lord comes to take us home. Yeah, therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be thou shalt be able to profit if so be thou mayest prevail thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels let down the astrologers the stargazers the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee he said he said now gather all those witches and wizards gather those enchanters those malams those people gather them together and stand up get ready with them I will know which one will deliver you. Which one has the power to deliver you? Which one has the power that is not obsolete? Power from Satan. Which one does it? Who made Satan? Do you know that Satan trembles at me? Then go and gather them and see what they will do my, to my people. You are trusting in them. Behold, they shall be as stubble, grass to be burnt up with fire. The fire shall burn them up, shall burn them, and they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a call to warm up, nor fire to sit before it. They will not deliver themselves from my judgments. Judge me to fire. Judge me to fire. I say, judge me to fire. They shall not deliver themselves. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored even thy merchants from thy youth they shall wander everyone to his quarter none shall save thee everybody shall scatter nobody shall save thee nobody shall stand for that religion it shall be nothing god will scatter everything god will scatter everything i say god will scatter everything in Jesus name we decree rise up upon your feet rise up upon your feet that's what the Lord is going to do rise up that's what the Lord is going to do I know my redeemer leave it I know my redeemer leave it I know my redeemer leave it he leave it forevermore I know Yes, I know Jesus, Jesus live. I know my Savior live. I know my Jesus live. I know my Redeemer live. He live forevermore. I know. Yes, I know He live. I know it. I know my Savior live it. I know my Redeemer live it. I know my Savior live it. He live it forevermore. Oh yeah. I know it. Amen. He live it forevermore. He will fight the battle. He has spoken. Believe the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophet. Ye shall prosper. Hallelujah. I know my Redeemer live it. I know my Redeemer live it. I know my Redeemer live it. He live it forevermore. Amen. 
I want us to go to prayer now. Worship the God of heaven, your Redeemer, Jesus. Hello, Jesus. That is the Redeemer. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is our Redeemer. Hey, we are redeemed by His power. By His power. By His power. He lives. He lives. He lives. Redeemer. He lives. Jesus is his name. He lives. Hey. is a lot. Let him the boss bust in the law. Let him that will boss bust in Jesus. Bust because of Jesus. Hallelujah. yourselves of salvation and victory salvation and victory for the people of God salvation and victory for the people of God assure yourself thank you worship Assure yourself, assure your family, assure the churches, 
assure Christians everywhere of salvation and victory because of Jesus he will show himself to these people the message you have just listened to is a production of holiness revival movement worldwide Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, Contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus I believe I 